Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Akoni. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for today again. Thank you for the privilege we have to approach you. Thank you for the word that you have given unto us, which is able to save our souls and direct our lives in the proper channel you want it to go. Father, we want to ask that you grant us revelation, grant us utterance, and grant us wisdom as we consider, furthermore, the prayer life of Christians. Thank you. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for how far God led us in considering the prayer life of a Christian. We last week looked at what God has done to make it possible for us to pray. And we said, God is desiring not that we will come once in a year, not that we will come once in two weeks, not that we will come only when we have problems, not that we will come when we have uh, things pressing upon us, but we will make the throne of grace our living room where we go in and out. We will, we will not be a stranger unto God but we will be fellow citizens of the household of, of faith. We will be part and parcel of the secret pavilion of the Most High God. God's intention is that we will dwell and abide in His secret place, in His secret pavilion. There He will unveil His mind to us. He will reveal to us what He wants us to do. He will direct our lives. We discover that prayer as far as a child of God is concerned. It's not just muttering some words or just making some incantations aimlessly to somebody who you are not sure is there. Prayer in the life of a child of God is a time of conversation, a time of listening together with the Most High God, sitting in council together with God. This had been very, very difficult in time past because of the problem of sin. Because it is impossible while men remain in sin for God to behold iniquity. That's why it seems as if God kept a great distance between us and himself. But we thank God that God who is seeking that we will maintain a fellowship with him in spirit and in truth. He has gone all the way to make a way for us. In fact, the Bible says he inaugurates a way for us and that way is Jesus Christ. And we thank God that that Jesus is not going to die. He's not going to live. He's not going to be demoted. Nothing will remove him. He will always be there. That means the way unto the holies of holies is opened and open forever. Nobody can shut it. Nobody can close it. Nobody can push us aside. God has brought us into his presence as Jesus, our permanent representative, on the council of the Godhead is there forever to plead our case. It is on this basis this morning, this, this evening that we are pressing forward on what should be the basis of our prayer life. What should be the reason for our prayer life. Now I have said that because of what God has done it's a privilege to speak to the Most High. 
Now I still want to go on to show you from the scriptures as the Holy Ghost will grant us grace today why it is good for you not to neglect what God has done in inviting you to himself. I have said why we preach that a Christian should live above sin, a Christian should not entangle himself with the world, it's simply to enhance your prayer life, to enhance your personal communion with God. Now the utmost of the Christian life is to be with God, is to be able to keep company with God day by day. And it is in that realm of life that we are going to be able to fulfill His calling upon our life. God is not interested on all those truants that go roaming about in the, in the streets of the world. And only when something terrifying comes to them, they come back, they say, Oh, Father, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me. That's not the kind of life God is looking for. God is looking for children who will sit around him, around his table, on the, around his altar, and they will chat together. They will do it together. It is such children that live with him. He can now send them to go and do things. He can now send them to go and preach. You cannot send them to go and cast out devils. You cannot send them to go and heal the sick. You cannot send them to go and do his highest purposes on earth. It is such people that live together in his secret pavilion. They that abide under the shadow of the Almighty. These are the kind of people God is looking for. And we believe that as we go on in this program, God will lead you into that experience. Where day by day, prayer does not just, is not just a routine for your life. It's a joy. It's a joy of being at the throne of grace. A joy of entering into the council of the Godhead. And then it will be a great privilege as we go on by God's grace. To learn to, to carry people's need. And a step will come when, when you develop this prayer life as God will lead you. You will discover that you are a special man. Special not because you have money. Special not because uh, you are great in the society. Special not because you are a professor or because you are a great uh, politician. That's not why you are going to be special. Special because you have a vital unbroken link with the King of Kings, with the Most High God. Special because you have a, a, a ticket, an invitation, a personal invitation to the highest place anybody could go the counsel of the Godhead, to enter into the presence of God and get matters solved. You are going to become special because when you go and speak to God on behalf of men, on behalf of things happening in your country, wherever you are, God is going to answer it because you have a direct access. I just want you to see what it means to develop a prayer life. Now, before we turn to the scriptures, I still want to remind you uh, drawing some illustrations from what happens in our land. Supposing uh, you are looking for a job. If you happen to have a relative who is close either to the commissioner or to the head of the department or whosoever, the prime minister who is in charge, you feel good that yes, I know somebody who knows the man. And once you speak to that person and say, I will speak to him for you, the matter will be solved. I know several of you, you just go and rest and tell all your friends that, yes, my matter has been dealt with in the, in, the, in the corridors of authority. But we tell you, for a child of God, the, 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 the greatest privilege we have is to be able to come to speak to God on behalf of men. Abraham enjoyed this privilege some years, I mean, some time of his life. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 19, you can see how a man exercised influence on the destiny of other men as he learned to speak with God. Abraham said, I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Most High. And he went on reasoning together with God over the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he began to tell God, and Lord, don't you think if we find 50 people in this, in this place that it's not correct for us to destroy it? And God, as though God, God, God has not made up his mind before, God said, eh, I see. 
So if, if we can see about 50 people, we won't destroy it again. And God went on, Abraham went on and said, Sorry, don't say I'm talking too much before you. I think if we see up to 30, even 20, we should not destroy the righteous with the wicked. And God said, well, I'll go and check. If we can see up to 20 people there, something, I will, I will, I will spare the land. Abraham said, excuse me, let me press a little more. Let me press a little more. What of if we can see 10 people in the land? And God said, well, I've not thought about that before, but if we see 10 people in that land, I will spare them. Even for the 10 righteous people, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. And can you imagine how Abraham discussed with God? Angels are, are not supposed to be in this place. Uh, towards the end of these discussions, as the Lord will lead us, you will see that the, the role, the, the, the privilege we have to come into the place of prayer is, is no angel has got that kind of uh, privilege. Some people go around, they say, in the Michael, pray for me, in the Gabriel, pray for me, in the this, in the that. No! Angels don't have this privilege. Because the Bible says, angels, they are struggling to look into these things, but it has not been granted them. They don't have that privilege. They don't sit with God. Angels are just ministry spirits. They are just servants. When God says, you, go here, they must run. And they do it. But we have a privilege. And we are going to read that from the scriptures today. A privilege of coming to reason with God because of Jesus. Because of his death on the cross. When Abraham finished speaking, he understood that the matter is solved. He said, but Eskisa, in case you don't get ten people there, don't forget my nephew, Lot. You remember Lot was with me some years ago and he led down that hole. Please, if you get there, remember him. And if you read your scripture very well in the book of Genesis chapter 19, the Bible told us that when God was going to overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham went and stood where he stood with God the, the, the day before. And he seemed to be reminding God that, God, I can begin to see smokes flying out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't forget my nephew, Mr. Lot. And the Bible says, God remembered Abraham and delivered Lord. That's the privilege of praying. The greatest privilege we have is to go to God and present matters and discuss things over with him. Now, I want you to see what is our basic invitation. What should be your confidence as you go to the presence of God in order to maintain this prayer life? Apart from the fact that we said that Jesus had gone there and is representing us there. Apart from the fact that we said Jesus had settled the problem of sin, he had finished everything, he had made a sacrifice, and the way is now opened. God has taken another step forward to make prayer possible for every one of us as his children. God went ahead and invited us. God went ahead and said, come and let us reason together. When we read the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, the scripture said, let us draw near with a true heart. But today I want you to look at what God himself said in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. That's where we are going to begin uh, to read from the scriptures today. I believe that as you are going along with us, God will change your life. God will change your perception about prayer. And if God is leading you to make most of what God is teaching us in this series, we pray that you will respond and be one of the greatest special men that could ever live. It's not because of anything, but because we have a relationship with the most high God and we know where to get answers for our problems we know where to settle things whatever men may say they may be struggling here and there a man that knows the way to the throne of grace is a man of authority already now verse 18 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 if you have your Bibles open it and let's go together come now and let us listen together says the Lord Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 
if you will be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I want you to note something there. What is the basis for our prayer? And I want to say, if anybody asks me, if anybody asks you, what is the basis? What gives you assurance? What gives you boldness to say you want to pray and that your prayer will be answered? It is because God himself has personally invited you. God himself has personally invited me to come and discuss with him. Look at it. Say, come now. God did not say, come next year. Come next week. Come in time of problem. He said, come now. That means the prayer life of a Christian is in the now. We cannot afford to postpone our prayer life till another time. Some people think, well, when all my problems are solved, then I will sit down and start praying. No. Even in the middle of your problem, when things are so tight, or when you are at ease, everything about you is fine, God say, come now and let us do what? Let us listen together. Let us talk it over. Let us chat over the matter. Living Bible say, come now, let's settle the matter. Let's set to the matter. This is the will of God for you. And if you read that scripture very well, the next thing is, says the Lord. It looks to me as if that scripture is saying, come now, let us listen together. Signed the Lord. It seems to me as if God has signed personally. He had, uh, he had put his own personal signature on an, invita in, an invitation to the throne of grace. I don't know. If God has invited you to come to pray, I don't know where, where else do you want to be. For some of us, if our ordinary heads of departments, ordinary commissioners and ministers and politicians, if they will just give you a special invitation and say, I will request, we cordially request the pleasure of Mr. So and so to uh, grace the occasion of the birthday of uh, my wife. Many of you, you will cancel a lot of engagements. You cancel a lot of programs. You say, they have invited me. Don't you see the letter of invitation? Don't you see my card? Don't you see my card? But I'm telling you something here today. That God Almighty has signed a personal letter of invitation unto you. There is no authority, no power, no principality, no devil anywhere. Here is God's own signature. He said, come now and let us reason together. Now listen, the prayer life as we are looking at it, the basis that God makes for our prayer life is not that you should send a message. There is more to prayer life than just asking questions. It is a time to be with God and to reason with God. And to be where God can discuss with you and you discuss with him. And when we have arrived at a conclusion, we come out. That's what God is calling us into. That's the level at which God wants you to come and begin to pray with him as a child of God. Now, God says, what are you thinking about that will hinder you from coming to pray? As we read the scripture, I say, the Bible says, God says, come now, let us pray together, let us reason together. I can, I, can, I can imagine some of you saying, well, me, if I were like the preacher, I would have been able to pray. Me, I don't know how to pray. Me, I cannot pray. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. All my life is full of sin. I can't make it. Look at what God said. Say every barrier, every hindrance had been removed. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God has done that because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because at the gate to the throne of grace, there you meet the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from every unrighteousness. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. I quickly refer you to 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
Now, if only we know how to come through the way that God has made for us, the way of Jesus Christ, there is no barrier of sin. There is no barrier of sin because the blood cleanses us from every unrighteousness. Only if we want to come out of our arrogance, only if we want to come and prove to God that we are, we are spiritual and we are holy in ourselves and that uh, we have been doing something that God should appreciate, that's when the way to the presence of God will be blocked unto you. A proud man will never, never, never have an access to the presence of God. But today God says, come now. Are you postponing the time of prayer? God says, come now. Come now. Are you thinking that after you are consulted with this man, after you are consulted with that doctor, after you are consulted with that uh, great uh, philosopher, then if, if their problem, if, if their solution did not help you, then you will go and pray as a matter of last resort. God said, no, come now. Let's reason together. Let's discuss the matter. Let's finish it together. Now, I want you now to still look at another scripture. Why? we must come to pray. Why it is good for you to develop a prayer life. Why it is necessary for you as a child of God to take this matter serious. I want to tell you today that it looks to me as an insult. It looks to me as a disregard of the voice of the Most High who had condescended so low and said, come, let me and you listen together for you to say you are busy doing anything. I, I see it as an insult for a Christian to be busy running around complaining, grumbling here and there about problems that he could have gone to discuss in the presence of God. I see it as a total disregard of an invitation from the Most High God. For you to be a prayerless Christian, for you to live any kind of land, the devil begins to push you up and down because you will not come to pray. It's, your, it's an insult. And I want you to think about it this day. I want you to consider God has said, Come, let's discuss. Come, this matter will be solved. Ask, and it shall be given to you. But you refuse to pray. You prefer complaining. You prefer to beg from people. You prefer to compromise your Christian life because of a little problem. You prefer to lower your body onto unbelievers because you needed a job, because you needed promotion, because you needed what? Why? Because you cannot come to the presence of God. The Bible says, before we refer to that to that scripture, I want you to see what the Bible says in the book of James. The book of James, and I'm going to be reading from verse, I mean chapter 4 and verse 3. I'm showing you here, now verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 2 and verse 3 says, You lost and you have not. You kill and you desire to have. You cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you have not. Why? Because you ask not. There are so many of us that are lost, running up and down with strong desires, strong determination. How will I make it? How will I make it? How will I make it? Yet you don't have. You do every manner of things. You push people down. You, you blackmail people in order to have something in your life, yet you cannot have. The Bible says you fight and you war. Yet you don't have. Yet you have not because you have never asked. Now I want to say that the, 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 the way unto the presence of God has been made open to us. That we may be able to come to his presence and to pray. We may be able to come to his presence as to get the solution to every need that may arise in our life. I want you to see that to neglect the place of prayer is to neglect the voice of the Almighty God. Jesus was telling us a parable. He said, a great king made a supper and invited some people to come. And when everything is now ready, because the Bible says, he said, go and tell them that all things is now ready. Everything about your salvation, everything about everything is now ready. Let them come. And they began to make excuses. Some say, I've just married. Some say, I've just bought a piece of ground. Some say, hey, I've just bought some yoke of oxen. I want to go and try it. I don't see any other excuse you can give to God why you should be a prayerless Christian. I don't see any excuse that is tenable before God why should you, you should live a defeated life when you have a privilege to come and discuss matters 
in the presence of God. I don't see any reason why we should live a life that is unfulfilling. Why we should live lives that are not glorifying God here on earth. Why we should be subdued by the pressures of this present life that is subdued men that never know God. I don't see any reason why, why you should live such a life. After God had given you a special, personal, confidential invitation, signed by himself, say, come now, let's reason together. Say, you ask, you receive not, because even when you ask, you are asking amiss. Now, finally, I want you to still see, what is the basis? Why must I have a prayer life? I say, it's because God said I should come. It is God himself that said, I should come and pray that he will do it. Now, I want you to look at the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and I read verse 12. Verse 11 and 12. According to the eternal purpose, which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access, with confidence by the faith of him. God has invited us to come and pray, to come and be with him, I want to read that same scripture from William's translation for God to enlighten you to see something here today. The Bible says, By union with him, that is with Christ, and through faith in him, we have a free and confidential introduction to God. We have a free and confidential introduction to God. That's why I should come to pray. Anytime you are kneeling down to pray, you are not just staying here. You are going right into the heavenlies. And there you are meeting with God. You are sitting together with God. Jesus has given you a special, a confidential introduction unto God. Living Bible put it like this. Now we can come fearlessly right unto the God's presence. Assured of his glad welcome. When we come with Christ and trust in him. When we come with Christ, we have a glad welcome that God is going to give unto us. Now why must you not pray? Finally, again, I want to draw your attention to this. Seeing that we have a great privilege, God has invited us to come and sit with him, to come and discuss with him, to come and listen together with him. Anything that could be of hindrance, will you not throw it away? That's why we are going to return back to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. He said, let us draw near with a true heart and with full assurance of faith, sprinkled our heart out of evil conscience. Every conscience that is wrong, every wrongdoing, everything that can hinder you from coming, throw it away. Anything that will make prayer life impossible for you as a child of God, throw it away. Sprinkle your body with, the, with pure water. Get the word of God into your life. Anything that will stifle your conscience in the presence of God, anything that will make the presence of God impossible through carelessness, through entanglement with sin, throw it away. That's what the word of God is saying today. And as we urge you, are you living one secret sin? Don't let the devil rob you of a great privilege by indulging in sin. If there is a sin in your life right now, will you stand up and say sin? You will not hinder me from entering to the presence of God. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. And so will it be with you. God bless you. Our Father, we thank you for granting us grace and invitation to pray. We ask that you will draw men unto you today, even as they bow to pray in Jesus' name. Amen.